Hey Katie. Hey Sarah. It's great to meet up with you for another Mozart snapshot. Thanks, it's great to see you too, as always. So where are we visiting today? Today we are going to visit the Alta Residence, a palace right here in the old town that was the historic residence of the Archbishops of Salzburg. Aren't there two buildings called the Residence? There are. This one which we're going to, the Alta Residence, and on the other side of residence plots is the Neue Residence. And so what's the difference? The difference is that the Alta residence dates all the way back to 1120, while the Neue residence was added by Archbishop Wolf Dietrich von Reitenau between 1587 and 1612. At that time, he made quite a number of changes to the old residence palace, including demolishing part of the building in order to make room for a new palace in the style of the late Renaissance. Since the residence was the home of the Prince Archbishops, who ruled Salzburg, it must have been the center of life in Salzburg then. That's right, everything in Salzburg centered around the Archbishop's court. It was the main employer in town, and they had an enormous staff that included cooks and valets and butlers and hunters and priests and performing musicians, orchestra musicians and composers. Wasn't Leopold Mozart employed as a musician in the court orchestra? Yes, he joined the orchestra in 1743 and later became court composer and Vize Kapellmeister. And I would imagine that the residence also has a direct connection to Wolfgang, right? How did you guess? <laughs> so what's the story behind? The story is that Wolfgang simply performed in this building on countless occasions as soloist, as chamber musician, as orchestra musician because as a young man he was concert master of the Archbishop's Court Orchestra, and then, of course, as composer. What an absolutely beautiful room. This is the Rittersaal, or Knight's Hall in English. What was it used for in the Archbishop's time? It was actually a waiting room to the larger state rooms like the Carabinieri Saal, where we will go later. And also, I think that the Archbishop simply brought guests here in order to impress them. It's indeed impressive. Mm -hmm. And the Mozart probably visited this room too, didn't he? Oh, Der kleine Mozart not only visited this room, but he performed in here at the request and invitation of Archbishop Schrattenbach. Do we know what he played? Schrattenbach had given Wolfgang really quite a lot of freedom, and so he performed in this room on countless occasions. But one important early occasion was the premiere of his oratorio, Die Schuldigkeit des Ersten Gebots, K35, which took place on the 12th of March, 1767, and was repeated again, also in this room, on the 2nd of April of that year. Did Schrattenbach like the work? He did, and therefore Mozart was paid 12 ducats for it. And that was the equivalent of a month's salary of a normal Salzburg craftsman. And in addition to that, Schrattenbach personally gave Mozart a golden medal, which really signified his recognition of Wolfgang's genius. And that led to other important performances in here, didn't it? Yes, both private and public. For instance, um, one private performance took place in 1772, and that was of part of Mozart's dramatic serenade, Il Sonio di Scipione, which, incidentally, was not performed in entirety until 1979. And then another important public performance was the premiere of Mozart's uh, music drama, Il Re Pastore, and at that occasion, which took place on the 23rd of April, 1775, Archbishop Colorado, the much less popular successor to Schrattenbach, who, by the way, is right there, um, Colorado was sitting in the audience in the very first row, right next to Archduke Maximilian, who was the youngest son of Maria Theresa. What an impressive audience. Well, you know, Mozart actually knew the Archduke from Vienna, and Colorado had commissioned the work in his honor. Well, Katie, I have to interrupt you here because this is also a really impressive room. Yes, and this room is actually called the Rotzimmer or Conference Zimmer. And in this particular room, Wolfgang himself premiered his violin concerto number no. five on the 20th of December, 1775. With the court orchestra? Yes, because uh, actually the court orchestra performed house concerts, as we would say, in this room with regularity. 
I would have loved to be in the audience that day. Me too. But to get back to Archbishop Schrattenbach, you said he gave Wolfgang a lot of freedom, but wasn't he the guy who locked little Wolfgang in the Salzburger Dome with a pen and paper to prove he was really composing the pieces that he and his father claimed? Yes, that was the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Why exactly did Schrattenbach do that? I mean, simply because he wanted to be sure that Wolfgang was for real and that he was not just supporting a con artist. I mean, you know, Schrattenbach had heard about all of Wolfgang's successes across Europe on this concert tour, and he wanted to know for sure that Wolfgang was really composing the music and that it was not his father, Leopold, who was doing the composing. I mean, let's face it, he, play, he paid really a lot of money for these tours. What do you mean? Well, Leopold was a member of Schrattenbach's court orchestra, and so when he went away for three years, then he was given months, I mean, really months add adding up to three years of months, of paid vacation. And not only was it paid, but it was paid in advance. Well, I guess considering that, it was only fair that he make sure that this genius kid Mozart was for real. Yeah, of course. So, voila. This is the Carabinieri Saal. It's magnificent. I think so too. Katie, actually, what does Carabinieri mean? The word actually goes back to the Italian police force, or gendarmerie, that had protected the Prince Archbishops. And I imagine in this beautiful hall, a lot of performances have taken place, right? Yes, and really going back centuries, because the very first opera performance north of the Alps took place in this very room. And when was that? It is believed to have been the 27th of January, 1614. And you know the 27th of January is anyway an important date because, well, that is Mozart's birthday, just about 150 years later. That's absolutely right. And I have one question, because there's a beautiful painting up on the ceiling. Uh -huh. This actually represents the four elements, earth, water, wind, and fire. And right in the center is the god Neptune. And who was the artist? Like many of the ceiling frescoes here in the residence, it was done by the Austrian painter Johann Michael Rottmeier, and it dates from 1689. Well, Katie, this was great as always. Thank you so, so much. And would you mind playing one little piece on this beautiful piano over here? Oh, I would be delighted to.